Right, so you have your Canva website template all ready to go. You just need to customize it, edit it for your business, and then publish it live online and get your website up and running. Now, if you have purchased the template from me, you will have received the pre-published checklist. So I recommend working through every step in that checklist there. But I'm going to show you how to get your website edited and live. So the first thing we need to do is work our way from the top to the bottom, replacing all of the text in here with text that's relevant to us in our business. Uh, the other things we're going to look at are your fonts, your colors and your images. So any text, obviously we can double click, we can change the text there. We can double click on here. Obviously edit it so that it makes sense for your business, whatever it is that you're selling or what service you are offering. Now up the top here we have our menu items and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. But again you can double click, you can change these um, names here. Um, every single element in terms of the text is clickable. Now the other thing with the text is obviously the font. So if you have a specific brand font you might want to go through and update that. So if I was to change this font and I was to choose... Uh, let's choose this one here. See how down the bottom here we have the option to update all of the text. So everywhere where this text is being used we can change it with our own brand text. So that's a really good time saver. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to change all. And now I've updated all of that brand, uh, sorry, all of that font. Again with this more script font here we might want to change that one to something else. Let's find another script font that's free. Uh, what about, gosh, most of the script fonts are actually paid. Uh, let's try that one there. Cool, and again we can click to change all. Now I don't like that one so much, so I'm going to hit Control Z, or up the top we can do undo, and move it back to what it was. Great, okay, so there we have our text and our font. The next thing is our colors so again we can save time um, if you don't like this deep blue color here I would click on the first panel click there change it I might go with a nice coral and then down the bottom we have the opportunity to change all so that's going to update that color all the way through uh, again this one here we might change that change all there we go and we might change that pale blue in the background I'm going to go with a Let's go with a pale orange, that one there, and again we're going to change all. So that's looking pretty good, it's looking more on brand. What we want is it to be consistent with your own brand, your own fonts, your own um, colour palette. So now we can have a look at the images. So obviously the best case scenario is that you would have a bank of your own images that include you in them um, and we would update those images. Now if you don't, of course you can use Canva's own photos. So on the left hand side here we're going to click on photos. I might do a search for laptop. And I might decide that this one here is a good one and I'll just drag it over and lock it into place there. Now work your way down, replace all of the images. I highly recommend you use a photo of yourself, particularly if you're a service provider on your website. Um, it is a bit of a red flag if I go to a website and I can't see any real live people or a photo of you on the website. So work your way through and change all of those uh, images. Now we want to update our links. So you'll see at the top we obviously have a menu across here. Now each one of these is linked to a different section. So to explain this a little bit more what I'm going to do is click down the bottom and show you sort of the page view, the layout of all the different pages. So here even though it's a single page website the pages split up into these sections or Canva calls them pages. And so what we want to do is uh, we want to have that navigation at the top um, so that someone clicks on it and they're taken directly to that section. So if we head back to this um, home section, we've got about, services, packages and contact. So now if we go back to that page view, you can see we have a page here called about, a page called services, a page called packages and a page called contact. So effectively if anyone clicks on one of these heading items they're going to drop down to that page immediately. So to do this we need to create a link and we link the actual text. So if I was to click in and highlight just the word about 
and I see this little link icon here so I'll click on that and if I click in the drop down it lets me choose a page from the document so obviously I'm going to choose the about page and click done now one thing I don't like about adding these links is it automatically adds an underline so the kind of default setting for any links online is to have it underlined so you know it is a clickable link but what I do is I actually remove that underline there now that's our heading links the next thing we want to have a look at is all of these buttons here so this one here is learn more and what I want to happen is when you click on that button I want it to drop down um, maybe to services yeah let's move it down to services so again I'm going to highlight that text I'm going to click on the link and I've already selected it there but you would click in there and you'd work your way down to the services page now I'm also going to make the whole button so that's the text that's clickable now I'm going to make the whole button clickable so I click on that again I want link and I want to click on services so that is done so now what happens when the website is live is someone clicks on that link and it will move them down actually let's have a look at a preview on how that works so we'll click into preview mode and we will see what it looks like okay so if someone clicks on that learn more button they're automatically taken down to the services section of that website so we'll close that down there so work your way down every single button uh, where have we got there contact me so that'll drop down to obviously the contact section at the bottom view packages so that's going to bring them down to where these packages are detailed um, obviously you need to update all of this information here but the next thing we're going to do is scroll right down to the bottom because we've got a bit of work to do in this footer section here first of all we want to change that color because that's not on brand that's better great okay so we want to obviously update all of our contact details so it's up to you if you want to have your phone number in there your email address your website um, URL that might be something you need to come back um, and edit once you've decided on what your URL will be um, but really importantly these uh, links in the bottom here so we want them to people to click through and go to your social media profiles so the way I would do this is I would open up a new tab I would go to Facebook copy my URL come back here and then again we're going to click on this one here we're going to click on the link icon and we're going to paste our Facebook URL in there so at the moment it's linked through to my Facebook page but you want to change it so it links through to your own now if you don't have Instagram or LinkedIn you can just delete that icon away there you don't have to use all of them you could even add in another one so if you wanted to add in TikTok for example I would come over here to elements I would search for TikTok icon oops find one that looks sort of matches those icons there if you're using a free plan obviously we'll need to make sure it's a free one uh, and I really struggle sometimes sometimes it's best to go and get an icon off the internet and then upload it uh, okay for this example let's go with the only free one there is this one here and so because that one's a little bit more on the TikTok brand we might go through and you know change these other icons so they match but once we've got that icon in here I'm going to click on the three dots I'm going to click on link and I'm going to paste in my TikTok URL there but let's delete that out there cool okay so we've done our contact details we've got our social links in there the last thing we have is down here in the footer so with the copyright we're going to change that we're going to make it the current year and we're going to put in our own name there let's just call it Susan S VA cool and then the next thing we have here is the privacy policy so privacy policy is really important if you're collecting people's personal information um, and so the easiest way I find to do this is to use the uh, Shopify privacy policy generator now if you have my copy of the uh, pre-published checklist you'll see a link in there so you can click straight through but it looks a little bit like this it's free um, it is very very easy to use all you need to do is pop in your email address down the bottom here and then it's going to ask you um, some more information about your business once you have completed that information it's going to email you a link to your privacy policy and when you click on the link it looks a little bit like this so my recommendation is to copy that to your clipboard go over to Google Drive and just sign up for a free you know Google Drive account once you're signed up in there we're going to go ahead and create a new Google Doc and then we're just going to paste that 
privacy policy in there. Now work your way through, make sure that it all makes sense. You know, there's some bits there that we need to um, add our own information in. So once it's all ready to go, what we're going to do up on the right here is click share and we're going to save it and we're going to um, use the share link. So here we have restricted. I'm going to change that to anyone with the link. So basically anyone with this link I'm about to generate um, can view this privacy policy. So I'll copy that link. I'm going to whip back over to my page here. I'm going to highlight all of that privacy policy text if I can get there. Cool. And I'm going to add a link. And that link is going to be to that Google Doc there. Now remember, I don't like that underline. So I'm going to take the underline away. Entirely up to you if you want to leave it there. But what that means is once this website is live and someone clicks to see my privacy policy, they're going to be taken to... Actually, let's open it in a new window. And they're going to see a document like this. Now, they don't have the ability to edit it. It's only because I'm logged in, obviously. Um, but they'll just be able to view that privacy policy. So that's sort of one way of getting around, you know, creating a new web page um, just for your privacy policy. OK, so let's get back to our website. Oh, this one here. Right. So. We are going to um, double check against that pre-published checklist. We're going to make sure all our grammar, our spelling, all of our branding's on point. We're all ready to go. And once we're ready to publish, we're going to click up on the right hand side here, publish website. And then we've got some last minute jobs to do. So a couple of settings here. We want this to resize to mobile. So that's really important because most people will be looking, well, at least half of the people looking at your website will probably be on their mobile phones. So we want it to be responsive. We want it to look nice on a mobile phone. The other thing we can do is add navigation to the top. So let me show, the, show you the difference here. So if I preview that without navigation, so all we're relying on is obviously those buttons there. But what happens is when someone clicks on a link, they have to scroll all the way back to the top to get to that menu. If we change it so that it's with navigation, you get this extra sort of menu at the top here. And so what that means is even if they click on packages, they can just click on services, contact, they can easily navigate throughout the website. And on mobile, let's switch to the mobile view, they'll get this little hamburger menu at the top. And we're all very used to using those hamburger menus. So I think it's a really good idea to make sure you publish it with navigation. So I'm going to close that down now. So we've got resize on mobile with, sorry, with navigation. Cool. And then we get to choose. So we can either have a free domain that Canva will give us, or we can purchase a new domain through Canva or we can connect it up to a domain that we already own. For this purpose, I'm going to stick with a free domain from Canva and I'm going to click on continue. Now we get to put in our subdomain. So our domain will be something or other that we put in here, .my.canva.site. So I might go Susan S V A or uh, virtual assistant for you <laughs> something like that it will tell you if it is taken so if I just wanted to go virtual assistant it ah oh, there we go the URL is not available so obviously someone's already taken that so we need to think about something that is easy to remember makes sense for our business um, you know that we can pass on that we can put on business cards that we can let people know so once we're happy with that so let's try let's try my virtual assistant Okay, that one's taken my virtual assistant nz we'll click out of there okay so that one's available so let's click on continue and the last little step is running through here so we've got our url at the top there we're happy with that next we're going to click on the pencil here and we have two things we can change we can click on our favicon there and upload a new one so i'm going to click on that and i'm going to click the plus and I'm going to upload a favicon that is on my desktop. Now, if you're not quite sure about how to create a favicon, um, have a look at my other training video. Uh, I will link it in here, but let's click done. We can change our tab preview at the, at the top there. Susan S. Virtual Assistant. Cool. So actually, let me run through. So the favicon there, did that change? 
there we go so the favicon there is up in the top you can see these little icons here so that's what the favicon is and the tab preview is the wording that we can see at the top of the tab there so that's what we're editing there and then what we want to do is obviously um, edit our website description so we want this to have some good keywords in it the type of words that people might be looking for when they need your services so virtual assistant for online business owners providing support for marketing administration uh, social media management management let's put new zealand based zealand based virtual assistant uh, susan s virtual assistant we don't really need to add that in there actually and it's not going to let us we've got 160 characters cool okay let's leave it at that right now we are ready to publish what we can do at this point is we can choose to hide the website from search engines and um, that is if someone is googling we don't want to appear in those google search results but that's unlikely that we want that because we want people to find us the other thing is if we're not quite ready to go live maybe we want a friend to um, have a look over the website for us do a little spell check grammar check for us maybe we would tick this and put a password on it and then we can share the password with whoever's going to check that site for us or maybe you're creating a site for a client and you want them to check it through before it's live so that's when we would use that otherwise we're going to hit the publish button so it's getting all ready to publish um, and while we're publishing we obviously can't edit anything um, and once it's live we'll have a look at it and see what we think so here we have our url we're going to copy that i'm going to pop it into a new tab and we'll see what we think how good does that look we can check our buttons that's working services we can scroll to the bottom we can try those social links it's going to take us through to as i said my facebook page we've got our privacy policy let's test that cool that looks great again because i'm logged in obviously i'm in edit mode it won't look like that cool we've got our favicon our um, details at the top there so it's looking really really good so if we now have it live and we think oh we want to change our pricing or we you know decide we want to start using Instagram and add that in it's really really e easy to edit so we just go back to our file uh, which we have in Canva so that'll be in our Canva area there and what we would do is we would just click on edit design we would make all of our changes there and then we would have to republish it so every time you make a change that's when you have to publish the website again so there we have it. It is super, super easy to create a website on Canva. If you get stuck, please let me know. I would love to help.